Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to talk about percents, but we're going to do so um, with the help of a very special guest lecturer. Um, students, please welcome to the stage Mr. Turkentine. Or is it Turkentine? It's pronounced Frankenstein. I'm pretty sure it's Turkentine. Take it away. <clears throat> I've just decided to switch our Friday schedule to Monday, which means that the tests we take each Friday on what we learn during the week will now take place on Monday before we've learned it. But since the day is Tuesday, it doesn't matter in the slightest. Pencils ready! <clears throat> now, this is obviously a bit of silliness, but kind of mood, really. As a teacher, there are a lot of times when I have had to handle last-second schedule changes due to all sorts of reasons, and then I would have to communicate those changes to my students, and sometimes, sometimes it feels just like this. Pencils ready! <clears throat> Today, we are going to learn about percentages. And for an example, let's take the recent unpleasantness. Supposing there were a thousand Wonka bars in the world, and during the contest you each opened a certain number of them. That number is a percent. Everyone understand? Now a few things here, both good and bad. First off, I think it was a great idea to tie the idea of percentages to something that the class is going to already care about and be invested in, like the Willy Wonka contest. These students are clearly not particularly enthusiastic about learning math, but if you can link the math to something they already care about, often you can get information in there and students begin learning despite themselves. Now let's talk about his claim that when you have a thousand Wonka bars, that the number of Wonka bars that you eat is a percent. And to do that, we're going to jump back over to the whiteboard. Okay, so here we have this word percent. And as I have done so many times in this channel, what I'm going to do is I'm going to break this word down into its parts, and we're going to see how the word itself, that word is telling you what you have to do. You don't have to memorize any formulas or anything like that. The word percent will tell you what you need to do. And this is what I mean. These are two separate pieces, and they each mean something different. So on the per side, in math, the word per almost always means divided by. And if you think about it, that makes sense um, from your ordinary arithmetic perspective or your ordinary real life perspective, right? If I want to know how many miles per hour I went over the course of a trip, I would take the number of miles and I would divide it by the number of hours that it took me to go that many miles, right? Miles per hour, per means divided by. Now, this second bit here, cent, is something that I have talked about before on this channel when I was doing my video on the metric system. But even without that particular video, most of you know that the word cent, or the prefix or suffix cent, means 100, right? Cent, there are 100 years in a century, there are 100 cents in a dollar. Cent means 100, and per means divided by. So when you see the word percent, all it means is divided by 100. When I say 15%, what that really means is 15 divided by 100. And you can use a calculator to get that if you need a decimal or whatever. So what does this have to do with what Mr. Turkentine said? And why did I say he was wrong? Well, he's mostly right. He's mostly right in that the number of Wonka bars that you get can be used to find a percent, but where he went wrong was saying what if there were a thousand Wonka bars in the world. If he had said what if there were 100 Wonka bars, well then he would have been absolutely correct to say however many you eat is a percent, right? If I ate five Wonka bars and there were only a hundred in the world, I would have eaten five out of 100. 5%. You, Madeline Durkin, how many Wonka bars did you open? About a hundred. There are ten hundreds in a thousand, therefore you opened ten percent. You, Peter Goff, how many did you open? We're gonna we're gonna pause there because I wanna I wanna break that down a little bit. Because I really like what he did there, but I don't really follow his explanation. 
Okay, so this student said that she ate 100 Wonka bars out of a total of 1,000. That phrase, out of, should be another sort of red flag in your head because most of the time it also means divided by. So she has eaten 100 bars out of a total of 1,000 Wonka bars. Now, what Mr. Turkentine said is, and I quote, there are 10 hundreds in a thousand, therefore you have had 10%. Okay, so I might have messed up that quote a little bit, but the idea is really good. What he means is that there are 10 hundreds in a thousand, so if you have a hundred of the um, Wonka bars, that means you have one tenth of the total number of Wonka bars. But if you don't know how to do that right off the top of your head, the mathematical way of going about it is we can notice that we can divide both the top and the bottom of this fraction by 100. And we're allowed to do that because if we do it on the top and the bottom, it essentially has no effect on the value. But how did he get from this, there are 10 hundreds in a thousand, to the actual 10% number? That seems like a bit of a leap to me. Well, there are a few ways to look at this. You could just grab your calculator and do 1 divided by 10, which would give you 0 0.1. Now, 0 0.1 is not a percent, it is just a decimal. If I wanted to make that into a percent, I would have to compensate for that in some way. All right, and remember that this percent means divided by 100, okay? So if I'm going to add this symbol percent, which is essentially adding a divided by 100, I have to make up for that by taking the original value and multiplying it by 100. And I hope that you can see that when we are done multiplying and dividing by 100, we haven't actually changed the value of anything. So hopefully you can see why we're going to take this 0.1 and multiply it by 100. Now you can reach for your calculator or you can remember that in order to multiply by any power of 10, in this case we're going to multiply by 10 twice, right, that's 100, you just move the decimal point over one, two spaces, and then you fill any blank spots with zeros. So your answer should be 10% which is indeed what Mr. Turkentine got. So while Mr. Turkentine does have correct steps in his head, and although he did get the correct answer, I do think he needs to work on his communication skills a little bit, because I know that even when I was 16 or 17, let alone 10 or whatever Charlie Bucket is, I would not have understood that explanation at all. How many did you open? 150. That's 10% half over again, which makes 15%. Uh, I'm going to pause again, although I'm not going to go back to the whiteboard. I really like that explanation as well, because what he's saying is that we already know that 100 bars is 10%, right? We did that in the last problem, and mathematicians do not like having to do the same work twice if they don't need to. So what he's saying here is that essentially, he says half over again. What that means is because if you have 100 Wonka bars... 150 is that original 100 plus 50 again, half over again. So you apply the same exact proportions to the percentages and you get 10% half over again is 15%. A plus work, Mr. Turkentine. Charlie Bucket, how many did you open? Two. That's easy. 200 is twice 100. Not 200, just two. Two? What do you mean you only open two? I don't care very much for chocolate. Well, I can't figure out just two, so let's pretend you open 200. Now, if you open 200 Wonka bars, apart from being dreadfully sick, you'd have used up 20% of 1,000, which is 15% half over again. So, a few things there, obviously. First off, I actually really like the fact that uh, Mr. Turkentine here acknowledges that he doesn't know how to do a problem. That's a very important skill for any educator to have. If a student asks a question that you legitimately can't answer, you should say, I don't know how to do that. Although, you know, you could work a little bit on your tone of voice. Now, if you were listening closely, at the very end of the scene, Mr. Turkentine said that to get the percentage for 200 Wonka bars, it would be 15% half over again. 
Now, I see where he's coming from with this, but this is not the correct process to get the, um, to get the 20% that you would get. It should have said 10% doubled. That would be the correct way. We already knew that 100 bars was 10%, so 200 bars would be double 10%, would be 20%. 15% half over again actually gives us 22.5%, which is not the correct answer. So let's see if I can explain the problem that Mr. Turkentine was not able to solve. So Charlie Bucket only had a grand total of two out of, remember out of means divided by, two out of 1,000 Wonka bars. Now, there are a few ways to look at this that all sort of make sense to me. The one that works best for me is that I see this as 2.0, and I see it being divided by 10 three times, right? Divided by 10, divided by 10, divided by 10. So I take that, um, that decimal point, and I move it one, two, three points to the left, there's the decimal point, and then I fill in the spaces with zeros. So 2 divided by 1,000 is the same as the decimal, 0 0.002. Then, just like last time, in order to make it a percent, we're going to multiply by 100, which means moving the decimal point again, except this time, two spaces, 1, 2, to the right. Why 2 to the right? Because I am multiplying by 10, twice. So that gives me a final answer of 0.2%. The correct answer for what percentage of the Wonka bars that Charlie ate, if he only ate two, is 0.2%. Don't forget that even though we add this percentage sign, which just means divided by 100, we're still dealing with decimals and numbers, and they still behave the way that you know that decimals and numbers behave. Now, before I let you go, I would like to give you a couple more hints and tips about percent-based problems that will make your life easier when you get these problems out there in the real world. Obviously, one of the biggest places that you deal with percents is when you are tipping, at least here in America. When you're tipping someone at a restaurant or at a nail salon or something like that, you usually calculate your tip as a percent of the total amount that you spent. And if you keep in mind Mr. Turkentine's lesson about starting with 10% and then doubling or tripling or half again and doing a little bit of addition, you can figure things out pretty quickly. But here's another trick that uh, I've seen going around social media and I want to explain really fast. I've got this problem here that says, what is 12% of 50? And I promise you that you, yes you, watching this right now can do this problem in your head once you know what to look for. Okay, stick with me. Now, we know that 12 is being divided by 100, right? That's what percent means. It means divided by 100. And this word of here is a word that comes up a lot in word problems, and it usually, but not always, means multiplication. Okay, I haven't really done anything. I've just taken out the words and put in more symbols. Now, I'm gonna do one more thing that will only make sense if you watched my previous video on PEMDAS. Um, so please do check that out if you haven't seen it before. I'm gonna take this divided by 100 here, and I'm gonna replace that instead with times the reciprocal one over 100. Okay? Dividing by 100 and multiplying by 1 over 100 are the same thing. And again, this should make perfect sense, because what would happen if I multiply by 1 over 100? I'm multiplying by 1, which doesn't change anything, and then I'm dividing by 100, which is dividing by 100. So I've got, and I'm going to need a little bit more space here, so I've got 12 times 1 over 100 times 50. Now, what does this even mean? The reason I'm doing this is because when everything's being multiplied like this, you can do it in any order you want. Watch this very, very quick little flip, and then you'll be able to do the problem in your head, I promise. 
Okay, do you see what I did? I didn't change anything. All I did was swap the order around, and we're allowed to do that. But now let's change this back into words, okay? We've got this 50 times 1 over 100 times 12. Well, that means 50, 1 over 100 means percent, times is still of, and 12 is still 12. What this means is that when you are finding 12% of 50, that's the same exact thing as finding 50% of 12. Well, 50% is 1 half, so 50% of 12 is 6. All right, so anytime you are given a percentage question, remember that you are allowed to flip the order of the words if it makes it easier for you to calculate. Anyway, for me and Mr. Turkentine, thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you next time.